Hey Brex students, Frank here from AFP with a super exciting topic. Today we're going to be talking about how to approach uh, making an 80s cover on GarageBand for iOS. Now the last two videos I made, uh, one being on how to get an external instrument on GarageBand for OSX, and uh, the other video on dissecting uh, my 80s cover, I kind of went through my process on, you know, building the track from scratch. So I'm kind of going to just demonstrate it on something like Michael Jackson's Billie Jean. Uh, I'm not going to go too in-depth with, like, the intricate parts of the song. I'm just going to kind of build you the skeleton of what is uh, Michael's classic. So first things first, what you're going to want to do is we're going to go to the drums. I love to always start with the drums. And uh, let's hear what we got so far. Yeah, I like this kick, uh, but I think for Michael's track, you want it to be a little more softer. So let's change the kick to a vintage kick. Nah, not that. Let's try Classic Studio. Hmm, I like that. Let me just pull it back a little bit. All right. So what I like to do is instead of, you know making one drum track and placing all the drums on just that one individual track. I like to kind of spread out my drum tracks. I like to have uh, one track for kick, one track for snare, one track for hi-hat, as if it was an, a real uh, acoustic drum set. So we're going to start off with the kick. So first things first, I'm just going to make sure that my track settings are where I want them to be. I think 110 as a tempo is pretty good for a disco hit like this or like a kind of pop hit so uh, let's go ahead and record I know that's already probably quantized, but I'm just going to make sure that the velocity is kind of uniformed. So I'm going to go to 50. Let's hear that back. Perfect. All right. Now, when you have your kick, you can now... Uh, let's go back. When you have the kick, we can duplicate our track and create the snare with the same uh, drum kit. Yeah, I like that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and record. Now, I wasn't playing consistent, so you, you want to go back and really check on your velocity. So that, that's what I'm doing. I like to bring the velocity up to 50. And I'll just lower it if it's too loud. Sounds good to me. So now, let's duplicate this track and create the hi-hat. All right. All right. Just repeat that step and just check on that velocity. You want everything to really sound... I mean, it's cool to kind of have it not completely uniform when it comes to a hi-hat because it makes it sound real like you're actually hitting it. But uh, I just I want it to sound straight. So we'll go to 50. Awesome. So now that we have the 
base the, the main piece of the the main pieces of the drum kit that we need. We're gonna add our go. We're gonna go ahead and add our base. So I'm gonna go to add track and scroll over to base. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can go about uh, recording bass guitar. I personally like to use the notes function. I don't really like to use the smart bass or the scale. So uh, I guess it's whatever is up to you and, and more comfortable for you, but this is most comfortable for me. Yeah, so uh, just, to, just to let you guys know, it's, it's basically scaled out to uh, the actual tones of a bass guitar, so if you have any knowledge on the guitar or bass, uh, this is a really cool and fun way to apply that. So now that I got my uh, my bass part and uh, the tone that I want out of the bass, I'm ready to record. So uh, let's give it a shot. So they're not going to quantize that for you like like the drums would automatically. So you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that you you have that quantized. If you didn't if you if you play it perfectly, then, you know, don't quantize it. But I'm not a robot, so I have to. And that bass is kind of loud. So I'm going to just pull that back. I'm gonna check on the consistency of the velocity. So I would say let's you know, since it's a bass, I'll just boost it to thirty. It won't be that. Or yeah, twenty nine is fine. So um let's hear how it sounds. But it's missing one thing. The lead uh, strings, the, the the synth strings rather. So to get that noise, we're going to go over to keyboard and click on alchemy string or alchemy synth. Uh, when scrolling earlier, I found that uh, if you go to your track settings and you go to let's say blah 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 pads. Blue air is the one for me that sounds most like the the strings on that. Probably cut off a little bit. Probably pull a little off that cut off, but yeah, it it does have a pretty stringy sound. I wish I could just remove that air. Probably could. All right, so uh now we're going to go ahead and record the strings. Let's hear how it sounds all together. I also think that it's kind of slow. I'll wait till after we've heard it, but I'm going to kind of make it a little faster. But uh, let's see what we got so far. Yeah, that's pretty much sounds like Billy Jean to me. Let's see what happens if I move it to 15. I don't know. I feel like I can f when I'm when I'm making a song that I didn't write, 
you know, like whether it be like if it's an 80s cover, I like to channel the artist. I like to really think like the artist is thinking. And I feel like Michael would have thought that was slow. Like, you know, Michael's someone who likes to beatbox and, you know, record with his body. You know, like it, it, if he's not making it with his mouth or if he's not feeling it by dancing, I'm pretty sure it's not working. And I just felt like this is a little too slow. Let's just hear how it sounds at 115. Now that sounds a little more grooving. So yeah, this is one of the methods that I use to build a track on GarageBand, and this is definitely one of my main methods on uh, building a cover, uh, especially of, a, of an 80s song. And this is how I've been spending my uh, quarantine. You know, I've been I've been doing mostly this same process on GarageBand for OSX because I have you know a lot more sounds available to me that I don't have on uh, my iPhone. But uh, if this is the only ways, if this is the only way that you can record uh, like this, go, hey, GarageBand for iOS is a really impressive app. I would definitely recommend it to anyone like a, who is, you know, s starting off as a singer songwriter, trying to get their ideas down, trying to jot down, like, you know, just you, the, the basics on how to record. You know, getting their song out of their head and, and onto, you know, a recording. This is a great way, and, it, and it's in our pockets, you know, it's, it's at the tip of our fingers. So if you have any questions, if, or if you want to just leave a comment, if you thought the song was cool, just, yeah, leave a comment below, and I'll try to, you know, respond as quick and po as possible. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the videos for today, and I'll have some more videos uh, coming this week. I'm excited to uh, share some more of my knowledge with you. All right, guys, have a happy Monday, and have a good day. May the 4th be with you.